Hey, welcome back Design Squad. In this video, we're gonna cover Axure's functionality to produce dynamic panels and animate it a little bit. And in this case, the use case is a wizard. And basically a guided wizard with some steps. You know, you can express it with maybe, you know, bubbles. I'm here have a step indicator. Also some sort of content with buttons. And I wanted to like dynamically shift. So, you know, it's not just a boring form the user has to fill in. In this case, let's say it's mortgage application, but they would actually be, you know, we shift all the content in the box, but we also con contain everything else and, and just, you know, switch the step and stuff like that. You can add text, you can add, you know, different steps. You can add, you can make it kind of like a classic wizard guided step step-by-step step application, or you can make it minified like so. It's really up to you. I find it that, you know, if it's just a couple of steps, it's easier for users just to keep it minimal and don't distract them too much out of their, you know, actions we want to perform. And so I kept it this way. If you're previous, you're gonna see right away that we have this application screen. It's all designed in Axure, so it's all straightforward. It all has text for it. Nothing is here interactive. I have a button state like a hover, but it doesn't do anything if I click on it. So what we're gonna do is create three states with three types of content and back buttons so we can flick through. And I'll show you how to do that guided uh, wizard uh, to work properly and work fully. I'm gonna go ahead and just group the content, but only the content, not the box, not the steps. And I'm gonna tell you exactly why. And it's because what we want to do here is to shift the content only inside it and just kind of like slide it through. And I'm gonna increase the dimensions up to the borders. And I'm gonna shortly tell you and show it to you why exactly. And then center the content inside dynamic panel like so. So you're gonna end up with a dynamic panel which has uh, some space around your content. And I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a name. Let's say this is our content. And I'm gonna name the state, so it's, let's say, step, well, let's say it's C1, um, and then we're gonna have C2, and then we're gonna have C3, right? And then in C2, we want different content in there, so let's say this could be personal information. Boom! That's form two. Boom. So I made three different states. As you can see, it's really simple, really basic form. I have a kind of introduction slide. I have a, a personal information and finance information slides, right? So it's quite simple. Um, next, what I can do is just to make it a bit more animated. So let's say to every button, I'm gonna add on click event and say panel state. We're gonna select our content panel and we have all those steps. So C1, C2, C3, I'm gonna just say to next, or let's say maybe C2 for that specific button, and I'm gonna slide to the left all the content. And that's exactly why I wanted to kind of frame it this way with a white space around it, so that it can shift all the way, and it's gonna look pretty good in the end. So let's see, 600 by 600, and we can just leave the remainder like this. And I'm just gonna copy that on click event to the next state. Just paste it in right away and then select C3. And for back, I'm also gonna control or command V and just edit it again. And that's the previous state. And we wanna do it opposite direction because we're gonna go back. So this slide has to go back. And lastly, I'm just gonna copy again the same on click event and just do the finish application. And that should probably go take us to another state actually, which I forgot to add like C4. And here is, let's say, congratulations. And maybe some text. Okay, and that's, let's say, our C4, and I'm just gonna continue to finish replication and just edit it to C4. So we 
get that slide left shift from from one thing to another and then back button exactly the same way i'm just gonna bring it to c2 so that we have a shift and of course slide right and if i preview it it should work pretty well so i have that that and then finish application done pretty cool so far isn't it so if i go i can go back as well so we shift from one side to, to another side and it works pretty well you know like like a, as a quick prototype the only thing what we're missing and the most important bit is to align the steps in the wizard on top so it corresponds to this right and that's why i left it to the last bit because once you have the logic ready in your content it's really easy to you know apply it to any other um any other panel because all you need to do is then to add more logic to existing statements and existing on click events so next what i'm going to do is just i'm going to create a dynamic panel out of that stuff and on a separate note i'm just going to call it steps indicator like so so we know exactly what it's called. And here we're just gonna say, let's say step one, make a copy step two and make another copy and call it step three. Simple as that. And inside it, what we want to do is really one, to update the copy. So step two out of three, let's say, and let me just zoom in and then color the every step. So I'm just gonna take that so that's second step so first second and then in the third step all of them let's say are colored like so and then we have three boom and it's simple as that but there, the only thing is that there is no switch yet so we need to add some logic to it so i'm gonna go okay so get started is step one but I, as i click on it and I go to st state number two in this content uh, dynamic panel. I also need to tell the actual steps indicator to switch to step two. And I would do, do it immediately. So there is no fade in, there is no animation in it. We don't need, really need it. And then in the next state, just I'm gonna call, paste it and select step three. And in the next one, I'm gonna hide the actual step indicator altogether because in congrats screen, we don't have that fourth step, right? So we can hide it simply as that. And if it's a back, I'm gonna paste it. Uh, so we are on third step. I want it to, to take it to step two, that's correct. And as you can see, I'm just doing due di diligence so that we don't miss out on anything. And that's step number one. And in the first one is on. so yeah. So you just need to be careful, and you need to know. So to say, if I click on this one, we are gonna change the step indicator, but also the content. And let's see if that works. And I hope that makes sense. It's it's quite simple to be honest. So okay, we have that. Boom. As you can see, our step indicator switch. Boom. Third one. And on congrats screen, there is no step. It's amazing. It, it works pretty well and it, it adds a lot of dynamic value to the end user. And if we go back, as you can see, the steps also reset. So you get that type of loop and it's pretty amazing. So I hope this video was useful. As per usual, leave a like, subscribe to his channel, start applying these bits to your workflows and your daily pr presentations and prototypes you're making for your end users because if you experiment and actually put it in practice, you're going to learn really quickly and then can apply to any use case you find. Because once you know how these things are done, it's so easy to replicate and do it next time and do it much more complex because I'm covering the basics, really. You know, once you're in an actual project, you just you can do anything you wish. And it's usually the time dictates what you can achieve. But to be honest, once you know what you can achieve, it's much easier and much quicker. And so I'll see you next time and stay tuned for more material.